first squall in the boat and it is pouring. Pretty alarming, so we're gonna anchor. All I can say is I'm real glad last night is over and we still have the boat. Oh. Mm. Not much sleep, not much sleep. Lots of squalls, a lot of rain, a lot of wet sand. Not much sleep. Hang in there, rifle bird, hang in there, mate. It's time to face the music. Bit of a different day than yesterday. It's probably been about I don't know, 11 or 12 hours since I went into the tent. I'm only surfacing now. I probably had two hours sleep. It's just been like big school after big school last night. Oh, feeling like somewhat delirious with the combination of lack of sleep, too much sun and probably not enough water but I'm stoked the boat's still there that's a massive win look at her where is she she's out there doing her best the rifle bird gonna check up on Jacko now see how New Guinea gals faring did you go bro yeah the, the tent held up which I didn't think it was going to um, I had to come out and do a couple of adjustments overnight but all in all, pretty good. A bit dehydrated though. So dehydrated. Feeling like a bit of a shriveled prawn. <laughs> you look like a shriveled prawn. Look at your lips. Yeah. Look at your lips. <laughs> I feel cracked. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Um, it's high tide now, bro. It is high tide now. So we're going to have to pack this show up. Get out of here. And head into the school. It just smashed us a couple of hours We're ago. Continue heading north. We've got to get to up to hopefully near the tip of Australia today. We're going to double effort this morning to swim out to the rifle bird. Because one piece of advice from an old chummer that we were given before we left, an old commercial trout fisherman, he said, morning and afternoon do not swim off sand caves. Tiger sharks feed around the sand caves for the turtles but we need the boat so we can escape it getting any rougher out here. But we'll be together. We've got a 50-50 chance. Yeah. Someone beat up the shark, someone jump the boat. Oh, it's cold. here on to the next adventure hey jack there's a boat to the west good to save us if we yeah. lost our boat last yeah. night i was just thinking when we were swimming out to the boat how challenging that would have been at say 2 a.m in the middle of a big storm with significantly rougher seas and a ripping tide <sighs> all right let's hit it oh you good thing
Pulled into this bay here to do a bit of boat admin yet again, a bit of fueling up, a bit of transferring water over. We also got one bar of 3G on the mobile, don't know bloody how, um, but we are pretty damn close to the tip of Australia here and Horn Island and Thursday Island and the island group around there. Yeah, which will have some phone reception and is our next stop. So whether we get there this afternoon or whether we find a decent anchorage to, to pull up for the afternoon and, and night. Yeah, we didn't know what the weather was going to do, so we wanted to come in to find a, a fraction of reception to get a weather update and also make a plan with catching up uh, with a few mates from the Torres Strait so we can link up in the next few days. But uh, sun's just starting to peak out now and we're gonna go for a bit more of an explore. We've just come up into this little, uh, little bay that's got a fringing reef and sand, but the tide's too low so we can't get up and check out the beach. But Jacko's jumped in the water it's just gone down there about eight meters behind the boat and hopefully checking a few of these rocks here in three meters of water he can catch out a little bit of lunch for us because um, there was a bit of hunger getting around the camp bloody scenic spot to do so and um, yeah hopefully we can get a, a cray or a trout or something edible I think Jack's literally been in the water for three or four minutes. And have a go at that. Got a cray for lunch. We got coconuts for lunch. And coral trout. Well done, Jago. That should do for lunch, eh, Jacko? Yeah, that'll do us. Man, it's a great fish. Bar cheek coral trout. Beautiful. anchorage in here and then camp up on that beach we're just gonna nose up as shallow as we can and go and have a look around yeah, stay tuned for us trying to light a fire yeah we'll see how that goes 
line of fire to cook up the trouts. What about the trouts? Oh no. <laughs> Clean off so we look fresh when we hit the mainland. Just come up it's still low pretty low tide there's all this exposed rock here so we thought we'd come for a look along see if we can't find any oysters to add to our seafood buffet this evening looking for on low tide there's a couple of different varieties there's these smaller clustered up oysters which are uh, really hard to open and you're not going to get much of a feed and they cut the absolute shreds off your feet cut you to pieces but this is what we're looking for the big pile of black lip oysters right there it's a nice one Nice one. So we've checked a couple of patches now. Right down the end there, this section here, and just over there. So we're just peppering a few so we're not wiping out um, any great deal of the stock. Because you always want to be able to come back and get a feed. That's a big one. That's one I ate before. <laughs> Another really big one. So what we're doing at every campsite now, we've learned this the hard way, is coming and just sitting at a proposed campsite for, for five minutes and seeing if there's any bites, any insect bites, to see whether we need to find a different camp because it just makes it pretty unbearable when you're trying to set up a camp, pack down a camp, cook lunch, cook dinner, relax to any extent, um, when you're getting annihilated head to toe with insects, march flies, sand flies, mozzies, all the critters. So that's what we're doing, Jago. We've got one mozzie so far. One mozzie? Which is bearable. Yeah, one mozzie's bearable. It's ticking a few boxes though. We've got decent sandy anchorage, coconuts up there, flat, Protect it from the southeast, strong winds. But is there any bites? Not many bites. There's not much timber either. Not much timber. No. We'll find some. And it's also rained. It doesn't have fur cause. It's hard to know because in the afternoon there's a bit of breeze coming on, but at night it can become really still. And usually the bites come out on dark. So you can only just have a stab um, and go with what you know. Well, I think it could be yeah. on. I think this could be the spot. I think it could be alright, man. It's times like these I wish I had. Like, I'm a pretty, like, we're both pretty hairy men. Marchy. Oh, you're kidding. No. Oh, we need more leg hair so they can't get through. Look how bloody aggressive they are. Look, he's just smashing me. Digging its sharp nose into my skin. Ah. Look at the green eyes on them, man. They're terrifying. Oh no, there's a few of them. Oh jeez. So, we sat over there for five minutes and we got annihilated by probably 20, minimum of 20 march flies, 
in less than five minutes, which is a hell of a lot better than the other night, but still pretty uncomfortable. So we've moved about 15 meters north and set up the camp right on the water's edge, but out in the open. So we've got our tents just here. We're gonna do the fire there and got our gear. Um, got the seafood and our gear sitting there just on the, on the palm fronds to keep it off the really fine sand. Uh, but what we can see, what we've noticed is there's literally thousands and thousands of mosquitoes just hovering above us. And I don't know whether they're just biding their time, waiting for the sun to set, then attack or whether they're a variety or something that's just not going to touch us but yeah they haven't hit us yet but mildly concerned because we're too deep now we're too deep now in setting up the camp to change it up but here's the setup and we're going to get a fire going the bigger the better what we're doing we're going to get the fire going everything here is damp because it's just been bucketing down rain a couple of hours ago so I'm going to get the gas burner and try and just really crank it up. Let's see how we go. Go you good thing. Hopefully that's enough to get it going. Crank it up. Turn it up quick. That's gonna go out in no time. There's our sheets and clothes from last night, which were saturated in the school in the early part of the evening. Now finally getting time to hopefully be just damp to throw on ourselves tonight. And there is probably the best anchorage we've had thus far. Look at that. Look at the rifle bird, she's loving it. Just out there in the calm country, the smooth, smooth waters on the sand flats. So we put the coconut palm fronds right at the front so that when you go to bed you can get a bit of the sand off your feet. It seems to do the trick nicely. Unfortunately, there's plenty of these at this camp. We've even done it just for all the general bits and pieces, food, filming gear, camping gear, hunting gear. So we've thrown a bit of paprika on the top of the trout and now we're just dusting it in flour. We've got some oysters from the rocks at low tide. We just kept half a dozen of them for a little uh, Got a couple of limes left over from the neighbor's tree. Somehow they're still hanging in there two weeks on. And the crayfish that you got, Jacko. What's the gitter? Well done. New Guinea gal, here he is. Halfway there. <laughs> Nailed it. Pulling apart, that's so tender. I'm just going to try that. Oh my god, that's so tender. And there it is.
is the finished product. We're both so tired, so sunburnt, mildly dehydrated, but incredibly happy and grateful for this meal. Far out. We're about to lose light, so I'll thank you if you've made it this far for tuning into the episode and getting around what we do, getting back to basics. Most importantly, yourself to get back to basics, plan a trip with yourself or your mates, family, friend, partner. Get out there, get in the great outdoors, embrace the wild. Uh, if you are enjoying these episodes and loving what Back to Basics is all about, if you do want to support the channel, head over to our website. Um, find a heap of merch there to, to kit you up for the great outdoors or you can jump on to our Patreon for exclusive access to, uh, to what's happening in real time uh, and a few other tips and tricks, locations and asking us questions and all that sort of jazz. So, yeah, if you want to, feel free. Uh, if not, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll see you out here. We just rounded the tip of Australia. We just ran in the tip of Australia. We did it. This is where the journey begins. Yeah, for a lot of people reaching the, the tip of Cape York, the northernmost tip of the Australian continent, um, is quite often the uh, the end of the trip. But for us, it this time around, it genuinely feels like the start of the trip, which is yeah, pretty bloody exciting.